All right. Well, hello and welcome to our uh, district fundraising forum that we're going to start having on a monthly basis. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, those that are watching the recording, uh, thank you for joining us late. I'm glad you're here anyway. Uh, so but one of the first things I wanted to do is uh, let you know kind of my vision of what I was trying to do. And actually, hold on, I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put us on a screen share here so you can see what I'm doing. And there we go. All right, so um, uh, it does say April 16th because that was when I was trying to do this and we still had technical difficulties back then, but we're still good to go. So one of the first things I wanted to, to share with you was my vision of what we're trying to do. Uh, I want to... Um, be in the lead role, I'm going to be doing a quarterly fundraiser for the district uh, using event groove tools or other tools available to us. But the key thing that I want to do with this is I want to split the proceeds of whatever I do with the clubs that join me to learn the tool. Uh, very similar to what we did with the Rotary Comedy Night. Um, I did a lot of the work. Uh, a lot of the people on the committee were on the coattails watching behind the scenes. I'm trying to get them comfortable with the product and, and the tools and the things that they can do. And for that benefit, they got a link. Uh, they promoted their custom link and they made money. Uh, and so the district, we ended up raising almost $5,000 on a last minute let's dabble type event. There are other clubs that are doing this or in districts that raised over $100,000 using this kind of a tool. And that's what I want to lead us to where the money, even though we're raising it for the district, is eventually really going to come back to the clubs anyway, because it's going to go into, uh, uh, and I can't even remember the term, but it's going to go into the, the Rotary International. And then three years later, it comes back to us with the grant matching systems and so forth. So that's how I, I really want to do uh, learning the different things. And so with that regards, uh, you guys are here. Part of this is going to be driven by what you want to do with your, uh, with your clubs. And also, I don't want you to necessarily wait for me. This monthly meeting is also going to be, if you have a project or you want to do, we'll work together to get it going as a group. So I, I also anticipate groups helping each other uh, brain sharing and brainstorming. Oh, you know what, uh, Scott, that's a great project. Have you thought of doing this and this? And he's like, great. And then he adds a little extra widget and he starts doing better and we get better as a whole also. So uh, one of the things I want to do is if you haven't renamed yourself on your screen and I see most of you have, uh, I want to get people in the habit when we're on Zoom to put your name and your club in your screen. Um, Mine, you know what, look at that. I am just a bad exemplar. It should say Elmira Rotary Club, but I'm going to get to that later. And then the other thing I want to do is I absolutely hate our name right now. I don't want to be known as the monthly club and district events and fundraising forum committee group, whatever we want to do. So uh, I really want to name us as a catchy name so that when we start to grow or catch traction, other clubs are going to want to come in. And we don't need to do it today, but I'd like you guys to help come up with a group name because we're going to be doing this on a monthly basis. The third Friday, uh, Friday of every month, four o'clock, this is going to happen. So if you can't make it, that's fine. We're going to record it and we're going to make it available. But I also want to call it something nifty and neat <laughs> that other people would be enticed to go through, and I don't want to call it the monthly club and district events and fundraising forum. So um, keep that in the back of your bonnet and start working on that. All right, so uh, I have an agenda. You know the vision, you do this, you got the, uh, the new name. And so today we're gonna to be focusing on uh, some fundraising software and uh, emails, but there's a lot of different things. And one of the things, I i like to share with you is this guy named Thag. Uh, Thag is my uh, troglodyte Rotarian that sometimes I know I feel and I know sometimes some of my other Rotarians feel when we try and start doing something new with digitalness, especially in the internet, you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm the troglodyte. I just don't get it. And that's fine. Um, don't worry about it. We're all working together on this. We're going to get better. But look at the muscles on this guy. 
that means we can do something here. All right, so keep that in mind of what we're trying to do and we'll get things going well for us. So let's look at our first monthly forum. I don't want you to be afraid of what we're going into. Uh, and one of the things when we start talking about the digital platforms of success is this kind of stuff that's everything around there. Uh, we could be talking about social media one Friday or one meeting. We could be talking about texting or, or blogging or websites or uh, the different aspects. And one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that whatever we're doing, we need to keep in mind that we want to focus on our current customer, which is our current volunteers for our projects already or our fundraisers, our current donors, our, our current Rotarians, our current supporters, whatever we're doing, we got to remember that they are our focus because although this is difficult for us of what we're doing and sometimes we don't quite get it, our goal is to make it easier for them to do what we're trying to do. If we're doing fundraising and that's what my, a majority of my focus is, we want to make whatever we're doing, we want to make it easier for our donors to give us money or to join us for a digital event. So we, that's what we're trying to do with these tools. And if we keep that in mind and, and that what I'm saying is I want you to be OK feeling frustrated sometimes because if it was easy, everybody would do it and we would have 50 people on this call and not the, the 10 or 12 that we've got right now. So just remember, it's going to be a little hard to begin with, but the goal is to get them going first. And so I want to focus first on the email aspect of this, because wh what we need to remember is when we start talking about the social channels and anything else, in a lot of cases, we don't own that venue, that, that target. So for example, if we are doing a lot of things through Facebook or Twitter and Facebook or Twitter doesn't like us, they can turn us off and there's nothing we can do and we can't get back to them. Conversely, uh, if you are posting something on your Facebook channel, it's only going to reach about 10% of the people if you're extremely lucky and they're following you. So what we want to do is we want to collect their email addresses in a lot of the stuff that we're doing. Whatever project we're doing, whatever aspect, whenever you're talking to a customer, and that is a donor, a volunteer, or anybody that you're interacting with, your goal is to try and capture their email address. Now, you don't have to worry about what you're doing with it yet. Right now, you're creating a digital phone book because here's the thing. If people give you an email address, that means they want to hear from you. All right. And in the future, we'll talk about how to use the email properly so that you can get more results out of that. But to do that, you need to start collecting email addresses. And one of the things we want to keep in mind, if people say, well, what are you going to do? You're going to say, at the most, we'll email you monthly of what's going on in the world out there and what we're doing because there it's a sense of trust, it's a sense of relationship. So start trying to collect email addresses and what you're trying to do. And it doesn't matter what tool you use to collect your email addresses, just start collecting them. Now, I tend to prefer constant contact as the tool. That's what my club is in. Actually, the district is in constant contact as well as Club Runner. Um, they supplement each other very well. Other tools out there are Robly, Keep. You can do MailChimp. I'm not a particular fan of it, but I have multiple clients that use it. So it's not a bad tool. It's just not my favorite tool. So whatever you're doing, if you don't have a tool like that, that's something we can talk about later. Just keep in mind that we want to focus on getting email addresses with whatever we do. All right, so that's the email chain. I want to get into where the real power is. And I want to talk about fundraising. So there's basically six types of fundraisers out there. And so we talk about raffles and we talk about athons and auctions and crowdfunding, sweepstakes and sales. And actually, there's a plus one, but we'll get there in a second. Now, raffles, New York is a bit different. We have uh, the New York Gaming Commission that uh, they allow raffles for nonprofits. They just don't allow you to use it online and you can't use credit cards or online funding to get people to register for raffles right now. So what happened is back in 2018, the legislature passed a rule for 
uh, New York to allow online raffles after the Gaming Commission gives guidance. They haven't given guidance yet. They haven't passed anything. They put out a draft and that's where it's left at. So there's no rules yet. We're in a gray area. Uh, and so all I'm telling you is if you're doing an online raffle, you're technically violating New York law and just try not to do that for now. There's other ways that you can make money online until New York clears that. Uh, let's not put uh, our clubs in danger by accident. So one of the things that we did do already is the uh, we did the plus one, actually. We did an event. Uh, the We did the Rotary Virtual Comedy Night for the first quarter, and we did the 5,000, and we had, I think, 10 clubs participate. And so it wasn't too bad for the first event. Oh, and what I want to do is I want to do a different type of fundraiser each quarter for the club, for the district. So the one that I'm considering for quarter two is an auction. And the way I was envisioning this is that um, the clubs that want to participate, every club that wants to participate donates a gift basket or an item that can be either virtual or physical. So for example, you can give out a two night stay at a bed and breakfast in your area and somebody in a complete other state could buy that knowing that they're going to come travel over here uh, versus a wine basket. If they're buying a six bottle wine basket, uh, they probably are going to need to pick it up because you really don't want to be mailing alcohol across state lines at the moment. So the once the auction is there, that money would go to the district. Now, where the clubs come in is if your club adds two more items or 10 more items, those extra items, your club gets to keep the entire amount. And so if we get 10 clubs involved in this and only 10 items, that's not a very good auction. But if we get 10 clubs involved and each club really goes gangbusters with their uh, their members and they each put in 10 items. Now we have 100 items in the auction. And so it depends on what people buy is how much the club raises. And, and that's the way that we should do because there are some auction items. I've seen people spend over $1,000 on really good online auction stuff. And if we can get a club to donate a gift basket for the district and then they put it on a really good item and they raise a thousand dollars for their club for something that was donated because other people are promoting this and the event is going to be promoted district wide and if the clubs are involved they're going to be promoting it to their clubs too and so that being said then we would have for those clubs that are participating in this we would have a more often update so we would have an auction meeting for the different clubs participating so that they could ask questions and we would go specifically into this. And so that was my goal on this. Q3, I was thinking I wanna do kind of some sort of a move-a-thon uh, and there's different ways to do this, uh, but it's a different kind of a thon. And the neat thing about a thon is you can start having team meetings or not team meetings, team events. So you can have different people saying, well, I'm gonna do a thousand jumping jacks and whatever, or, or we're gonna do five miles in two weeks of walking, it, there's different ways to do a thon and all the money we raised, we would target food banks because every Rotary Club has a food bank that in their area. So if we have a master goal of help, you know, upstate New York food banks and the Rotary Clubs of upstate New York are doing this and we're raising money for this, that would be really good. And then of course, the clubs that are still participating are going to get uh, extra cut for their local food bank. And so that's how I envision that. Quarter four, we're going to do an end polio now crowdfunding with peer to peer. And so we're going to have a lot of competition between the clubs. Uh, there, there, there's an ability to do teams and affiliates. So if you've ever seen uh, uh, fundraising teams where you, you get a team captain and they go and find five or six people that are non Rotarians on their team because they think they can do better than their brother down the road, that, that sense of competition helps raise more money on this. And so there's a lot of things going over there. And these are the tools that I want to be using. This was the old pricing schedule. It has changed, right, Robert? Yes. 
they've got some really good stuff there. And in fact, I'm going to share that email with you in a minute. Um, uh, we did the Rotary um, comedy night and I did a kind of a nifty report. So let me find this email here. And so here's the report. I'm not going to read this report to you. Just know that it's available on a link to you at, on the, the district website. And so you can read the report. Uh, the report has all the results, the different aspects. We did weekly meetings, so you can watch those meetings if you want. The final recap meeting that goes over this report is right here. You can watch that at your heart's content for those that are interested in figuring out what is going on. So there's the link to the final report. And uh, I want to uh, now I'm going to go into uh, a little bit more of the details. So in a minute, I'm going to bring Robert on uh, on board a little bit and let him drive a little bit. Just so you know, Robert is a past district governor for what number, Robert? No, I'm a past assistant district governor for oh. District 7980. District 7980, and he got way involved with Event Groove, so much so uh, they loved his professionalism and stuff that he's joined and the Event Groove team. And so he's actually an official Event Groove representative. So he's actually here on a dual capacity, both Rotary as well as uh, Event Groove to help us with specifics. Um, here's the neat thing. Event Groove is actually free for every district club member not club member, club. So all of these tools, you guys already have it. And, and what it does is it actually, you see over here, it's Rotary 7120 Gives. It would be Elmira Rotary or Elmira at Rotary 7120 Gives is our website. And Spencerport.Rotary7120 Gives and all these other things. And so once you get your own club set up of which we would help you, uh, including setting up a... a um, how do you transfer the money? A Stripe account. Stripe account, yeah. Uh, this is your money and you can start using the tools. So the tools that I'm using to bring your other clubs in, I really and hope and anticipate that individual clubs would partner with the community. So maybe the Elmira Rotary Club partners with three or four nonprofits and we do the same thing affiliate and we split the proceeds. And so the Rotary, I'm looking at getting our Rotary clubs more involved with the community by helping them raise money, helping us raise money, networking with them, and really moving up gangbusters. So that being said, this is the link that Robert sent us. And there's a very nifty video of how these guys sold in 10 days $40,000 worth of tickets for their fundraiser. And I'm not going to play the video here. Uh, I think you guys could play it over here. And if you're looking for ideas of different things that you can do with these tools, you've got golf tournaments. Please ignore the raffles because this is actually U.S. wide. But once the um, New York opens up, you've got a lot of different things. Uh, you have a thon example. So if you click over here, you could start looking what I'm talking about with by the move a thons. So different clubs are already doing a move for polio. I'm kind of limiting that uh, polio into the fourth quarter because polio month falls into that quarter is the main reason I pushed it over there. Uh, auction examples, crowdfunding examples. If you're looking at what different Rotary clubs are doing, this is the way to go. And if you look at event examples, uh, or let's see, it was in here somewhere. Our uh, Rotary comedy night is actually listed in here somewhere. Uh, I found it by accident. It was very interesting. So anyway, Robert. Yes. What would you like to add? Because I feel like I'm babbling. Well, I, I'm going to start by saying I understand that New York can't do raffles, uh, but there is a campaign inside Event Groove called Sweepstake. And the difference between a raffle and a sweepstake is that a sweepstake removes itself from the gaming requirements because it allows the ability for someone to go in and get a ticket without paying a penny. And therefore, it removes the onus of, of your buying a chance to win. Right. You and, don't have to and, buy to play. You don't have to pay yeah, to play. And everyone is eligible. Um, it's buried in the copy. And listen, people are going to give. We Our experiences is that 
people will, will will pay to play. But but that's something. And the and and there's not much difference between a raffle and in a sweepstake. Um, but I, I urge you to take a look at that. Um, so what I'm hearing then, Robert, is if you see something that looks really cool as a raffle, turn it to a sweepstakes and go. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Continue. Um, I, I will say that one of the most important aspects uh, from my vantage point, and one of the things I always point out when I'm talking to groups about uh, the, the platform, is that it's all about storytelling. We are in a storytelling mode. As Rotarians, our whole thing is tell the story, tell the Rotary story. Uh, we all have our Rotary moments that we talk about that get us and get our hearts connected to what we give back. There's no reason why when you're trying to raise funds for your club that you can't find that storytelling moment and put it in your digital story. Um, I, I can't tell you how important that is. Um, uh, one of the things that I always say is that a picture or a video uh, is worth a thousand words. Um, I, could, I could take you on a picture. Um, I have one here. If you can, you, can I share my screen? Um, in 30 seconds. Actually, probably less than that. Hold on. I'm going to go to a non-rotary event, but I'm going to share my screen to one of my favorite mock-ups that I've done. Let's see if I have it right here on screen. I'm going to pull up the screen. I'm going to take you to this because to me, this is the essence of, of being able to tell your story. And I, there are lots of rotary stories I've told in the same way, but this happens to be the March of Dimes, um, which we all know and love, right? All right, um, you can share now. Yeah, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. So you should all be looking at my screen here. Um, and so I'm going to... Unfortunately, you're seeing it at the storytelling moment, but you'll see this is a more, I'm going to back up a second because I, I, I want you to see this in the, all right, so now you see the, the March of Dimes here, Travel Destination Fundraiser, and then the, the next screen that will come up is a newborn, uh, premature born baby. Um, and so being able to tell your story in a way that 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 talks about uh, yeah, we're going to do this, but in reality, we're doing this because we want to support this. And, and, and that is what drives people to call to action. And so I can't reinforce how important that is. And in anything that you do when it comes to Rotary, um, uh, and I'm going down into the, in, in, in here, uh, it, it's important. And, and so, um, you know, there are great crowdfunding examples of, of ways to um, uh, tell your story. Another great thing that I will share with you related to this uh, platform is that there's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising available to you. Um, uh, when, when my district did its polio campaign last year, we did a campaign that was called um, uh, uh, the world's greatest meal to end polio. And it looked something like this. And we raised $18,000, but it was matched two for one by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we raised close to $60,000 with this one four, three, four week event. But one of the things we did is we, in, in, we in, included in it, um, and I don't know if I can get to it. So I'll go to the, let me see if I can get to this. Um, we included in it the uh, impact of the clubs. So every club had their own giving page. And, and this is, um, I'm gonna get to it on the back end to show you. Each club had their own giving page and they all were inspired to give from those giving pages. And they were able to track and we had a leaderboard for their success. And you can see that some raised a lot, some not so much, but the point is, is that we were able to um, have a good time with that conversation. And so if I went into um, uh, the Rotary Club of West Haven's giving page, which looked something like this, they each had a Facebook button, a Twitter button and a link that drove people to their page. If I want to view their fundraising page, I could go into their fundraising page and here's the Rotary Club of West Haven. 
um, um, uh, this is their club and here's their story. They could even create their own story by going in and setting it themselves and telling their story and setting that on their own. And, and that's the most important thing that you need to know is that you have the ability to go in through this means and really uh, uh, in conjunction as Tom has said in, with other, uh, with a multi-district event like you did with the comedy event is create things of this nature that really drive that kind of scenario. So, so um, uh, it's really important for you to see uh, the kind of capabilities that the platform does. And I think from my vantage point, one of the most important things is for you to go in and play. You can go into your club account. When you set up an account within Rotary, here is my uh, district account for District 7980. And just to give you a sense that my district in seven, eight months has raised over a half a million dollars through this platform. So that means that we have um, uh, uh, clubs and, and, and um, uh, um, you know, raising a lot of money. So what you're looking at is if I go up to the district 7980, this is my district, um, uh, uh, this is my district giving page. There's good old Bill Gates. We just finished the Million Mass Challenge Tour. Um, here is the end polio. Um, I'm just playing around on this crowdfunding thing I'm setting up. But, but um, if, if I go over, one of the things that the district has the access to is they can look at what everyone's doing and help you. So Tom has the ability to go inside and see what every club is doing from a campaign to campaign standpoint to help you do what you need to do. Um, for instance, um, West Haven, I'm just seeing this for the first time, is doing West Havenopoly. And it's not, it, it looks like it started. So they've started the campaign and they're doing West Havenopoly. I, this is the first time I'm seeing it. they just started it. So they've raised zero dollars. It must have started today. And well, yeah, one view. <laughs> Yeah, one view, and and but I'm going into this campaign. I've not seen it for the first time, and they're doing West Havenopoly. And if I and and they can purchase items, and let's go down here. They can purchase a game board, and I, you know I'm not looking at how this all works, but it's all discreet. West Haven again this year is unable to hold the auction due to the pandemic. Instead, celebrate West Haven Centennial with a collection collector's edition of West Havenopoly. They have a game that they've created, and they're selling it. So again, it's kind of like the book that that. Um, uh, 7190 is, is selling through uh, Melissa Ward. Uh, I, I mean, everyone has a way of using that, but this is a sale, right? So that's just one example of a campaign that's brand new um, that, that, that comes off of uh, uh, our, our district. Uh, but, but, it's all, but, but Tom has the ability to view this because it's all about helping each club do what they need to do. If I go back to the district um, uh, itself, um, uh, if I go down here, um, and I can go into um, I can go into the Rotary Club of Stratford. So that's one of the clubs that have allowed me to come in as a as a as, as a district administrator. And so now we're going into their clubs, uh, their activities. They currently have a prime rib night in play that they've raised over thirty three hundred dollars on. That's coming up uh, in four days. So they're coming down to the wire there. Um, they just they 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 already did. A, um, an event last month, which was a, um, uh, a, a bingo night that raised 2000 um, bucks, uh, but they've hit their goal. They're all setting goals that are, that are realistic. Um, and I think that that's what's important. You don't have to knock it out of the park with a $20,000 thing. It's so easy to turn these events on and raise a lot of money um, or not a lot of money. You can raise a couple of grand in a week or in two weeks and that's okay. So um, just to piggyback on that, you know, part of this is the first two or three events that you do, they're really training events. That's what we did with the comedy night. I'm like, you know what? Let's learn. Let's play. We made $5,000 and 10 clubs learned. So when you start doing it, if you only raise $300, then you're good to go. One of the things I'm going to be doing with our club is I'm going to be putting on the 50, 50 and the, uh, the fees or, or the fines where people can pay online using this tool instead of going through PayPal. So there's different ways you can use these tools for your club, but don't think you have to have a $60,000 campaign to start. And I wanna share this with you. This particular campaign is a real exciting one to me. It's the East Haven Rotary golf ball drop, the great golf ball drop. 
they're hiring a helicopter and he, it's a raffle. And so it could be a sweepstake. So I don't want you to be afraid of this. And people are buying balls and they're gonna have numbers on them. And they're gonna go up in a helicopter and the helicopter is gonna hover over a green. And then they're gonna drop the balls at the pin. And then the, the ball closest to the pin will win. And I, I just love this. And I want you to see the story that they've done because when it comes from a marketing standpoint, it's not just the story that they're telling, it's also what they do with video. I want you to watch this. I'm gonna make this live, so. Who wants to be the camera underneath the golf balls filming that? So again, I, I, I only show that to you because I, I can't tell you the importance of video and pictures in your, in your um, uh, campaigns. It's, it's just really, really, really critical in, in the way that you operate. So um, uh, I don't know whether you saw that. I guess you did. Did you see that okay? Yeah, it, it was choppy. But yeah, I mean, well, that's it's a video on Zoom, so it's choppy yeah. on Zoom. So, but um, that just gives you another example of, of what's out there. So I, that's, I mean, listen, the other thing you need to know, I don't know if, if, if uh, Cynthia's on the call. She's not. She's um, not. So hold on, there's a couple questions. Um, okay. Does the district have a discount for constant contact? Um, there is discounts around for it, particularly the biggest discounts if you pay for it annually, which is what uh, most of us do. Um, but or if there's a nonprofit, if you have a 501c3, there's a nonprofit discount pricing available for that. Did you say we can't advertise a raffle online? No, you can do a raffle online. What you can't do is accept money online for a raffle, but you can for a sweepstakes. Uh, and it's just the element of chance. So that's all that is. Uh, how does Event Groove get paid or what is their cut? Uh, right, I can answer that. Okay. So Event Groove um, uh, is a business just like any other business in the, in, in, in the uh, marketplace. When you make a lot of you know, your money, Event Groove makes a little bit of money per transaction. Uh, sometimes Event Groove won't get paid. If you use the tipping uh, payment method where you give the donor the ability to decide what they're gonna leave and you, you pay nothing as a club, the customer can, who's making the donation or doing whatever they're doing, uh, can use a, 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 a bar to decide how much they're gonna give. If they give nothing, that means the bank group gets nothing and the bank group is okay with that. But if from a pricing standpoint, we charge 7.5% for sweepstakes, um, for, um, uh, uh, for raffles, which you don't do, and for a thons, and 4.9% for sales, um, and for um, uh, uh, auctions and for crowdfunding. And then we have a new campaign called the All-in-One, which allows you to do a raffle or a sweepstake and a thon, a auction and a sale, all in one campaign with one checkout. And that's a 7.5% fee. Now, here's the thing. If you use the percentage pricing, then you can uh, push that cost entirely to the consumer and you pay nothing. Which is what you I recommend also you do. choose to absorb that cost entirely, including the credit card processing, which typically in a nonprofit 501c3 is 2.2% plus 30 cents a transaction. So you're talking about a potential aggregate of about 9.75 um, plus 2.2 is 9.7%. Uh, and so that's the worst it's gonna be if you absorb it all. My favorite option is the, uh, what, what I call the guilt option, where you give the donor the decision to decide whether they will pay the fee or not. If they pay the fee, you don't pay. If they don't pay the fee, you pay. And it's, it, it's taken off the, the it's, it's uh, subtracted from your tape. But here's the good news. We find that 75% or more typically will pay the fee. 
which means that if you're bringing in a hundred dollar aggregate, you'll probably net around 97 and a half dollars, which is about two and a half percent, which is pretty darn good in a fundraising environment. So, and I've seen it as high as 97, 97 and a half percent. So uh, your costs really can be nominal and you can choose on how you're going to make that work. If you want to push hundred percent to the donor and you're paying nothing, there's nothing wrong with that and you can do it. And, it's, and when you set up each campaign, you're setting that up. You can choose tipping, which is free pricing versus percentage pricing. And then in percentage pricing, you can choose those three options. Does that make sense? So if you email me your emails, cause um, I don't have them for everybody. I'm gonna do a screen print. Maybe I can capture them. Um, you can see the email that they sent me today. I'm gonna make sure it goes to just this team right now. And you could see that they just adjusted their pricing and they reduced pricing in a lot of cases uh, and re reestablished the 4.9%. Generally speaking, uh, I always just push it to the end user. People are used to it now. When they buy a $20 ticket online, they're used to paying $22. People are trained to pay for those fees. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to pay the fees out of the $22, that's really up to the club. And so therefore that money would go to Event Groove, but to me, it's really just better to push it or give the tip option. Uh, we did much, we did really good at that. And so that's the best way to go. Uh, let's see, uh, someone else said, so your 50-50 is not a raffle, it is a sweepstake. That is correct. Uh, but up, uh, uh, thank you, Jerry Ann. I hope I said that right, from Greece. Uh, she's not here today. Cynthia Culver is our head of success. She would be able to answer any specific questions we have. She has been an absolute gem to helping me get uh, what we're trying to do with, with the, the club going together. And, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. So she's been really good at us for this. Um, let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. That being said, I want to open this up to you guys now. I think uh, we've done a lot of the talking. Uh, what is your thoughts? Or are you guys interested in getting your clubs twisting their arm to donate an item for the auction? Um, and then what do we want to call it? Because we need to have some sort of catchy name to it. So uh, unmute yourself with the space bar and let's just throw some discussion out. Don't everybody talk at once. <laughs> I can say Clifton Springs is in town. So that's two clubs because my club's in, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah, well, same, same with mine. But... <laughs> I, I have a question for everyone. How many of you have set up your Event Groove um, account within the 7120 uh, platform? Raise your hand. So okay. Scott, So that's a good starting place. I, I want to say this. You can't do anything until you go, and, and it's in that email that was sent to you, Tom. Yep. There is a link that, Tom, you should put in the chat that is what you use to start setting it up, and it's so easy to set up. All you need is your um, uh, EIN. You don't even need that, actually. Uh, you don't have to have an EIN to, to set it up and start raising money immediately. Um, and if you need help, um, uh, you let Tom know, um, but it should be fairly straightforward and easy to do. It takes it's two quick surveys there through there. Is it in there the it chat? Is. There it is. It's in the chat. Everyone so here needs to use this link. You oh. need to. Could you could it put it up there so I can copy it off? <laughs> yes, I will pop it up here too. So hold on. Let me do it back to a screen Thank share. You. Thank you. Tom, are you going to copy the notes so that we can see them? Are you, are you talking about the auto text? Chat. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll make that available to everybody. So let's That'll see. help, then we don't need to copy anything down. All right, so here is the link for those that were looking at it. And I'm going to- Go see. Rotary. Yep, hold on, let me see if I can do this here. It's like one point, Rotary 7120. Yeah, I thought I was able to. Uh, let's see. Can I do this? No. Give. No, I got it on my screen, Tom. 
Or uh, I'll just click on the link and open it up. Sorry. There you go. Okay. This is what you're going to go through. So here's the link up at the top. Okay. Two steps. Get and your it's so simple. Going. And 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 it, once you have that set up, then you can start playing around and testing everything. You don't have to publish anything. Just get to know the platform. And then when we come on here, you can start asking questions that have a direct relationship to uh, what it is uh, that we're talking about here. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Now, now, is there a difference if you have a foundation versus just the standard EIN? Uh, I would set it up in the foundation because you get the 2.2% plus 30 cents a transaction on Stripe. And then any funds you get in, you can, you can transfer foundation revenue that go to your foundation bank account to your club bank account if you have to. There's better financial incentive if you use the foundation or if you have a 501 number. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. All right. If a club doesn't have a 501c3, is uh, does Rotary International have one that we can use? No. You have an automatic 501c4. Every As Rotary club. club is a 501c4 automatically. And you just have to put in the club name. And if you run into any problems, there's a button that's in the setup in this two page thing that says, can't find your EIN, click the manual button and it will allow you to type in your name and you'll start. So there's no blocking from your getting set up. You just have to do it. And if you run into any problems, let Tom know and, and, and we'll get someone to your desk, to your door front uh, uh, and help you out. That, that 501c4 is not so easy if you don't understand it. You don't need to understand it. Just type in your club name and just hit start in manually. If you, don't have a, if you don't have an EIN, the system, if you put in your club name in the, in the uh, uh, name area, it will automatically look you up. It's looking into, um, into um, federal uh, databases and an existing database of, of nonprofits and, and finding you. Uh, if it doesn't find you, it just means that you put in it in a little differently. Just hit the manual button, type it in manually and then hit go and you'll flow forward. We'll get you handled. So I wanna share one other thing with you that you have the ability to do. Uh, the district has, you can do what they call print on demand. And so uh, if you want, and you are starting to do, uh, you wanna bring up your level up, you could start doing event tickets or design your own, you can do promotional flyers. All this is built into what you're trying to do. And, and then you could start customizing it so that you have physical tickets. So when we start having the ability to either do hybrid events or, on, or regular events, you can now have a printing service built in. So if you don't have something like that and you want to start adding a level, that's what this group is about is, hey, have you considered doing this? And so what you're doing is you're just creating a perception. It's part of the story. It's adding an element of professionalism very easily. And that's kind of what I want to help the different clubs do. Anything else out there? I will always try to keep these meetings in under an hour. So we got 10 minutes. Does anybody have a project or a fundraiser or a something in the back of your head that you want as your first club. I just kind of want to hear what you guys are thinking and like, Ooh, this might be really good for our spaghetti plate or whatever. Don't everybody talk at once again. All right. I don't, we don't have one, but I did have a question, Tom. Yeah. Um, going to these uh, district fundraisers and the quarter one, two, three, four, um, you said we could see the your your final report on the comedy night um, yep. on the district site. Okay, because I'll get that to you. 
I, I'd be curious on that. I just wonder what this pop well, not that I expect you to discuss it here, but might have been learned from that experience having being I did attend it for part of the time. Okay. Yeah, it was um like you say, it was a first go around and and, and really encouraging hearing the 100,000 from some districts. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Some other districts did really good. Yeah. But but that that particular event um, had some risks, apparently. Oh, no, not really. I mean, not per se. It didn't cost it. It cost the district and it's in the report. It cost us like four hundred and sixty dollars of our fees. And then it went out. Oh. I know what you're talking about. I don't about. mean financial, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah one of the Rotarian, uh, Rotarians, one of the comedians was a bit more risque than uh, expected. I know what you're talking about. Right, right. yeah, and that was- It yeah. happens. I That's mean, nothing's ever gonna go perfect. If that, and that was the worst of it, I'm okay with that. So I, I did put the link for the report in the chat. So okay. if you wanna grab it, you can get it there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Come on, I need some projects. What do you guys think for your clubs? You need to unmute yourself. Spacebar. Well, Why gonna... Tasting and, and May we're, we're doing. Um, <clears throat> I'm not putting it together, but uh, I think we're in pretty good. And we're going to use an event group, from what I understand, from the chairperson. So uh, we may be in touch about that. Well, you absolutely should be in touch just in case we can go, oh, you got it all done. And that will probably make them feel a little bit better that they're doing it all right. That would be the, the absolute best case scenario. <laughs> you know, just a load off. I'm, I'm waiting to hear from our chairperson uh, who said she's, uh, who has attended a couple, a couple of your <coughs> trainings for event who is group. It? And, and uh, uh, so I'm waiting to see what, uh, how it's coming together. I'll let you know. Okay. All right, I'm going to start calling you out. Kathy, any ideas? What do you think would be your first project for your club off the top of your head? Well, we do have a, a, a golf tournament. Okay. And we're looking for ways to increase our um, profit from that. Mm -hmm. And I think because most of us, and I'm, I apologize ahead of time, are uh, technologically dysfunctional. Thanks. Uh, Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that we would do well to get on Facebook more often and all those other uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I really wanted to know what that um, million mask project was. So I can go right onto that site when I, after I create yep. a, and I can look at that. And yes. Get you all don't need to create pictures. an account to look at that. It's available to you right now. Oh, okay. Thank on you. that link. Do you mind if I share something, uh, Please, Tom? Robert. So I'm sharing my desktop and I, you talked about golf tournament. So just mm -hmm. so you know, you all are one of the users of this, this, uh, this, this program called, which is a, the ticketing side of this. Uh -huh. And I just want you to know that, that we in, in, in our district are doing an inaugural golf tournament, a golf tournament. So I want you to look how nice this looks. Yeah. Here's, so this is their golf tournament. They're selling individual golfers and forces. But look what's on the bottom. They have their golf raffle. And you can do this. Integrated. Integrated fundraising and ticketing. Well, I was, I was actually thinking that, uh, you know, if we do this for the golf tournament and use the, the helicopter drop, we have a pilot in our group. And yeah, um, you could do that. And have, can you imagine having the helicopter coming over um, uh, over at the end of the golfing? And that's the last thing before dinner, before dinner, uh, right. that they drop the balls and do that. And so they're yeah. buying golf balls during the course of the day on, and they can do it from their phones while they're on their carts. You know, and you can have a, a, a somebody at each green telling them, hey, get your golf ball. You don't want to miss this. Buy as many as you want. Here's the link, and you have well, QR codes on the green. They point their phone at the QR code, and it launches the campaign on their phone. Oh, so, cool. you know, I want that, you to think about the way you can use marketing technology like QR codes to literally launch a campaign. And that's why we're having this meetings on a regular basis to, you know, throw ideas out on this. You know, and there's so many different little slivers that you could do to make it fun. Uh, one of the things that would be really cool is 
you have everybody bring out their phone and everybody record a video and post it on their Facebook page of the drop. So all of a sudden, now you're getting all kinds of publicity for it post event, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, let's right. see, Linda, right. you're next on my square. What are you thinking? Well, I'm definitely a newbie at all of this and I'm just trying to take it in and I'm hopefully going to be able to bring some great ideas back to my club and we can discuss for future meetings. So off the top of your head, what kind of project that you guys are already doing would be good to add this kind of an aspect? Well, our two major fundraisers are a wine fest, a music and a wine fest. We're in the Finger Lakes. Okay. And a chocolate extravaganza. So I, I could it. see where you, we could use this for ticketing and advertising. and Absolutely. And there's lovely reports on the back end that help this. Uh, let's see. Brenda, what, what, what about you? What, what kind of projects do you think your club might play uh, with this? We Well, we have our golf tournament uh, lined up for, I forgot, sometime this summer. I got the date on my phone, of course, but I like the idea of integrating the big ticket raffle items online and, and doing that. Um, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. So the long run is the neat thing about this kind of stuff is the first time you do a golf tournament using this tool, there's a little work putting it together. But the next year that you do it, all you got to do is copy last year's event and change the year. And most of the work is already done for you. And so if you get a new uh, coordinator or something like that, it makes life easier for continuity. So we start, we did just sign on with our club runner and it like the, the uh, uh, I forgot, whatever module would allow us to do something just like this. Um, uh -huh. We don't have it quite up and running multifaceted yet just for right. the registration. Yeah, I, I've had a problem with uh, the club runner registration thing. Tends to get expensive quickly too. So be sure you look at your per registrant fees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Vicki, your turn. Hi there. Um, our main fundraisers that we've done are um, usually a chicken barbecue and a raffle. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also do um, volunteering at the Red Wings. So we sell beer and whatever, and they get a, we get a cut on that. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to use this this year for our chicken barbecue, because that's coming up pretty quickly. Um, but I would definitely want to use that. And I'm really curious to see what some of the other, because we're a very small club. Right. So I'm curious to see what other um, ideas people have done that just will allow us to um, really utilize, you know, this as a better, you know, to reach more people with, with fewer members, you know, so. Off the top of my head, if, if the, uh, the Red Wings allow you to do it during your beer sales, um, if you have the ability of here's your beer and give them a business card with like a QR code for your next event. So people, while they're there, they can scan something mm -hmm. you're already doing online. You've got okay. a captive audience of, That's awesome. you know, here, check out this event or, or we're auctioning, you know, uh, a craft beer extravaganza or something along those lines. They're already there for beer. So you're saying, hey, if you like beer, check this out. And they're at a game and they have the mobile device. So if they're bored, they're going to be looking at it. That's a good idea. I appreciate that. Yeah. So we'd like to incorporate doing some new and different things. That's why I'm hoping to get some good ideas. I've already seen some. Um, on that site that look like they might be interesting. I know like a scavenger hunt or during pets, there was a club in Albany that talked about doing, um, it was like the amazing race they mm -hmm. sort of did online um, as a fundraising thing. And I thought that might be interesting too. So. Right. Uh, let's see, Karen, I'm gonna read your thing here. I'm here to try to get some new ideas for my club too. We're trying to figure out if we should adapt our previous fundraiser says, such as some of our meals to pick up and go Maybe a little roadside stand for Santa for the kids to say hi as they pick up Ooh, their pancake breakfast. The woo was me. She didn't type it. Uh, looking for ideas that we can adapt or new ideas to consider. Would love to figure out how we can have card game tournaments online too. Robert, anything on card game tournaments? Card games? Card uh, games. I'm sorry, say that again? Card, card. games? Poker, like, I don't know. Poker. Um, you can use, listen, one of the things you should know about this, the platform is you can live stream 
this going to be doing that. It's built inside the platform. You can use Zoom. You can use uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. You can do whatever you want. So if you want to have a magician, um, uh, our district, one of the districts down in Jersey is having a magician night where they have a magician uh, doing stuff. If you want to do uh, card games and um, like bingo, we had a, t a club that did bingo uh, and they people bought the cards and they sent them out digitally uh, to people. And then they, they did the live stream to do the drawing of the numbers. I mean, you can, listen, you can do anything. I, it, you got to use your creative mind and ask for help. One of the things you need to know is that Cynthia Culver, the head of customer success and her team is available to you at any time to you just send in a note and ask for her assistance. She will assist. If you want to try, give me a call. Tom knows my how to get a hold of me. I can come in at any point too, but Cynthia is the main contact for you know supporting you. And we have a team dedicated to Rotary to help you guys out. So um, if, you know, don't feel like you can't do something. Ask, and ye, and 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 ye, and ye shall find. <laughs> Excellent. Tom, um, is can we do bingo in New York State? Is that yes? Is that you can bingo. Hey Tom, okay. I gotta go off to another yep. meeting. Um, so I'm gonna depart, but I think you're in good hands with Tom. Tom's a great uh, um, uh, champion of this platform and of really giving you this. And I hope that here's what, one thing I wanna leave you with. Spread the word, spread the word to those clubs that aren't here. There's only, how many clubs are here? Like five, six? One, two, three, I mean, how four, many clubs do you have in the district, Tom? Uh, 63, I think. So there's 55 not here. And if you and think about this, we raised a half a million dollars in eight months within my district. You all ought to be able to raise half a million as well or more in the next 12 months. That's my vision for you all. And yeah. I think you can do it. It's not difficult. It's just, you just gotta do it. So is that good, Tom? Yes. So you I all got- take care. All right, one final slide for you uh, before we depart. Like I said, I like to keep these to an hour on purpose and I'm just waiting. There it is, I went too far. Ha, slide share coming up right here, screen share. Um, this is public image coming up, the musical. I have no idea what they are doing with this. So there's a link at the bottom that's PI, public image dash the musical, TM are capitalized. Um, they are basically gonna try to educate us on how to improve the public image but I look at it this way. This is an opportunity to learn how to use uh, marketing that they're going to be sharing with us to also make our events that much better. Uh, so um, this is something that you have to register for. Uh, it's not available uh, unless you do register for it. So I'm about to share the link on our chat session. Um, other than that, unless there are any other questions, uh, we are at our hour limit. And apparently I have uh, hungry people in our household because they have been texting me while we've had this meeting to uh, uh, start cooking. And I, I, I promised them steak. And so um, there's the link for you on there. There you go. Uh, uh, technology, <laughs> they're always, that I can't get away from them. They know where to find me. Uh, any last comments before I close this down? Just thanks. Thanks, Tom. I always learn something new and <clears throat> hoping to get our club moving, continue to move in this direction. Excellent. All right, guys, let's have fun. We'll talk to you, uh, you. Uh, next uh, month. The, the third Friday of the month, four o'clock. Lock it out. Third Friday. Okay. Third Friday of every month. Great. Take care. Thank you. Have a good month. Bye-bye.